So, Game of Thrones, huh? Yeah. You know, I went back and forth on whether I wanted to do any videos on Game of Thrones or wanted to talk about it, but, you know, I just watched the documentary that they made after the wrap-up, and it got me reinvigorated to actually do something on it. I did not, however, want to do reviews or critiques or a complaint video, per se, because that's just been done to death. So, there were really just a couple things that I really wanted to talk about. So I'm actually going to do a couple videos, split them apart so that you don't have one gigantic one to watch, uh, on a couple subjects around Game of Thrones that I wanted to touch on. But on this episode, I really wanted to get this out of the way. It's been something that's bothering me, and it has to do with, you know, storytelling and narrative more than anything else. And so, subversion requires context. By the way, we're going to be talking about spoilers, because I just kind of have to. For all of Game of Thrones. If you're not familiar with Game of Thrones, you're going to be pretty lost. But, here we go. Throughout the course of this series, you've heard one word really prominently used by the cast and crew. Subversion! 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 Repent! Subversion! Shame! Subversive shame! And actually, Game of Thrones has been very good at subversion in the past. It's just that more recently, it seems like that's kind of faded into the distance. And now it's just subversion because the plot requires it, even though it doesn't really make sense for the characters. Like, let's go back to the very beginning of the show. Episode 1, Jamie and Cersei, the twins that like each other a little too much, are caught liking each other a little too much, in the top of a tower at Winterfell by Bran, who subsequently gets pushed out the window by Jamie in order to protect this illicit adulterous relationship that they have. Now that might have seemed extreme and also seemed like something you wouldn't see in fantasy, but it also makes complete sense because of some of the story seating that they did right before that with John Aaron's death that prompted everybody to be in this place at this time. And then also what you discover over the course of the season, which is basically that Cersei's children may not be in line for the throne. They might be Jaime's children and not King Robert Baratheon's children that she is currently married to. And if that is the case, it means that the Lannisters have no political power, so we have to do everything that we can to protect that secret, including pushing a boy out of a window and then trying to kill him repeatedly after that. Eventually leads us to Ned Stark, the lead character of the entire series, getting his head chopped off by Joffrey, which, yeah, is definitely a subversion of expectations, but it is also completely contextually correct because Joffrey needed to show that he was king. He's always kind of been living in his shadow uh, under his father, Robert, and was always kind of treated like a child because he essentially is. And so when Cersei and his soon-to-be wife, Sansa, who is also Ned's daughter, are like, okay, I understand, you know, he's up for a betrayal of the crown. We'll just have him go to take the Night's Watch. Joffrey's like, yeah, I like that idea, but you know what? That's not the kind of ruler I want to be, and really, just because you suggested that, I don't want to do what you want me to do. I'm going to be my own person, wah, 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 because I'm a little crybaby, and also I'm a terrible human being, so no, you lose your head. Red Wedding, we see most of our favorite characters just get, like, killed off, assassinated. But again, that makes complete sense. Walder Frey and Rob Stark made a deal. Hey, Rob, why don't you marry my daughter? And I will help you out with your war. And then when you become king of either everything in Westeros or just the king of the north or whatever you become, uh, my daughter will become queen or the wardeness or something. And I'll have a lot more political power. Yeah, that sounds great, Walder. Oh, I fell in love with somebody else, and uh, thanks for all the help that you've been giving me, but guess what? Uh, I married somebody else, so, mm, well, sorry. Then the Lannisters come in, they're like, oh no, we have a better deal for you, Walter Frey. Here, uh, just uh, kill all the Starks when they're least expecting it, and we can end this whole war, and you can ally with us, and, and then you'll actually have political power. So, only caring about political power, which we've already established Walder Frey wanted, it makes perfect sense when you hear, The Lannisters send their regards. 
Subsequently, Purple Wedding, same thing. Joffrey made a lot of enemies with a lot of houses, and now they happen to be in the same general vicinity, and someone was going to take the opportunity necessary to poison and kill him. And it also kind of makes sense that Tyrion ends up being the primary suspect. His family was always looking for an excuse to get the, you know, black sheep of the family in trouble for something, and sure, he hated Joffrey, so let's go with it. Cersei blowing up the Sept. Shocking, yes. Subversive, yes. But also makes total sense. She realized she was losing political power, that there were all of these other factors that were going into her consolidation of power never happening. And now they happen to be in one place at one time, and we know that they're all going to be there, so I'm just gonna keep my son from being there at the same time, and I'm gonna put a bunch of dragon fire barrels under there and just blow the whole thing up. All my problems are solved. The Mountain and the Viper fight, which is like a, a double subversion, because at the start you're looking at this lightly armored, half-drunk character who's gonna go up against this gigantic powerhouse in, like, full armor, and you think you know exactly how this is going to turn out, then the Viper's getting strikes in left and right, and you're like, oh, the tide is turning, this might work out really well. But of course, the Viper needs the mountain to admit that he killed his sister. Needs that. And getting close enough to him at that point, even when he's on the ground, proves to be a very bad thing, and uh, the Viper uh, also uh, loses his head in smashy, smashy time. So there's that. Jamie freeing Tyrion makes sense. Tyrion going and killing his father <laughs> before he leaves also pretty much checks out. The crown of gold, hold the door, the battle of the bastards, Arya's assassination checklist, hard home. These things make sense. They're not idealistic in terms of a fantasy setting, but they do absolutely work in the context of the story, but that doesn't seem to happen when we get to like season seven and eight. It, it feels like things are so rushed at that point that characters start making decisions that don't make sense. It's possible that they would do these things, but having no context for the subversion makes it seem implausible. Arya could have very well been the one to kill off the Night King. That would have made sense. I, I can accept that. But Arya, like, leaping out of the dark from what would have had to be 30 or 40 feet from a wall? There's no context for it. And also, if they were going to do that, you could have done a lot of other things. Like, she can take other people's faces. Why couldn't she just take one of the White Walker's faces? That would make sense. You could take a White Walker's face and then just get right up behind the Night King and be like, damn, take that. And you'd be accomplishing the same thing. Thing, but it doesn't really make sense in terms of what she is currently capable of or what we know. Daenerys throwing the script right out the window and just starting to charbroil an entire city that she had just conquered doesn't really make a lot of sense in context because we've never seen her try that. Oh yeah, she's used her dragons, she's used her armies to conquer before, but she always uses it as punishment for her direct enemies. We haven't seen her go down that road where she takes more extreme measures yet, so the context of that doesn't really work. Bran becomes king at the end. Yeah, I can understand some of the logic behind that, but again, there's no context for why any of these people would really even know who Bran was. So it seems implausible. Again, subversion requires context. And that actually leads me to another thing about subversion, which is there's a very specific type that we get toward the very, very end of this show that I, I don't necessarily think people are talking that much about, so I wanted to bring it up. Reversion. I think it's probably pretty jarring for a lot of fans of the show to watch these characters that had these long arcs where they had character development pretty much just become the thing that they were always going to become. And yeah, that's kind of subversion, but at the same time, it also negates a lot of what we've seen these characters go through. At the very beginning of the show, Tyrion Lannister, one of her favorite characters, pretty much just wanted to enjoy wine, women, and song. 
That's really what he wanted to do. And then he kind of got roped into politics. At the end of all of this, he kind of reverts back to being the wine, women, and song person who doesn't really want to be in the political rigmarole, who ends up, guess what, back as Hand of the King, just under a new ruler. Jon Snow in episode one is going to go off to the Night's Watch. And then, after finding out that, like, he probably has a better claim to the throne than anybody else, his hidden lineage, he comes back from the dead, he goes on this giant journey, they want him to be King of the North, at the end of all of that, yeah, you're, you're going back to the Night's Watch. Sansa, at the very beginning of the show, is going to be a queen. She's going to marry Joffrey. She's going to be royalty. That is her plan. And then she goes through this long arc. She has some pretty bad husbands. She becomes kind of cold and hard, but then at the end, she becomes a queen. Pretty much on target for where she started. Arya, at the very beginning, was talking about, like, well, what's west of Westeros? Like, she was curious, and she was wide-eyed and innocent. But then she went on this whole quest where she became basically Westeros' version of Hit Girl, just, like, taking other people's faces and killing without mercy and becoming an assassin. And then at the very end, she's like, you know what, I'm gonna sail west of Westeros. I still wonder what's out there. All right. Jamie goes on this long redemption arc that kind of shows that he's not a terrible person. And then at the end, declares that he's a terrible person and goes right back to Cersei. Cersei, at the beginning of all of this, seems kind of helpless. She's, you know, under Robert's thumb, and then she's kind of under Joffrey's thumb, and she can't really get through to them, doesn't seem to have a lot of political power. And then at the very end, she winds up right back with Jaime and a kind of helpless situation. And guess what? The two of them, just like they were together at the very beginning of the show, are together when they die. At the beginning of the show, they talk about how Daenerys could become the Mad Queen, because Targaryens are cray-cray, so maybe she's going to be one of those. Then she spends the entire swath of Game of Thrones trying to prove that she is not that, that she is a fair and equitable but strong and firm ruler. And then, in the last two episodes, decides, you know what? No, I'm the Mad Queen. Screw it. And that could have worked. I can see a version where that does work, which hopefully I'm going to be talking about on the next video. But it doesn't work in this context because there's really not been enough setup for it. If the plan was to have them all get back to where they started, what did we learn from this? What did we learn from the characters? I feel like there should have been more to how that resolved. And again, it has everything to do with the fact that subversion, or even reversion in this case, really needs to have the context to explain why that's happening. And if you haven't properly done that, it's not going to feel very satisfying. Hey, thank you for watching Vlogging Camp, uh, and uh, I will have another episode that I want to do which, I'm not a professional writer, I don't know how to do these things, but I am going to mind palace a little bit of what I think could have worked to get the characters to the basic resolutions that we had them in by the end of the show. And again, don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe because you know you already did for your HBO Go subscription. Oh! We're gonna try to explain this because I have this deck of cards. This is actually from like 2012. Um, and I'm gonna see if I actually have the principal characters that I need in card form, because this might be a good visual reference. Okay, um, yeah, I think that this might be a bit of a problem. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna work. Like, it's not bad with the Starks. I got the Arya, right? And, uh, oop! Got, got Ned. Okay. And I have, I have John. But I don't have Rob or Sansa or anyone like that, so that's a little bit troublesome. Then, like, the Baratheons, okay, so, like, I got Joffrey, great, okay, we've got King Robert, yep, and, uh, and then we got, well, we got Cersei. But I don't know if I have any other Lannisters. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, I forgot a suit, I forgot a suit, we're here. But we got the whole Lannister clan, we got Tywin. We got Tyrion, we got Jamie, and we have Cersei. Wait, wait a second. Cersei got two separate cards. Did, 
Daenerys had one! Daenerys has one card, Cersei has two cards. I think this means Cersei technically won the Game of Thrones, or at least the Card Game of Thrones. In the Card Game of Thrones, uh, you either win by having two separate face cards, or you die by only having the one. Good job, Cersei. Oh, I got Aquaman! I'm, I'm practically halfway to a Justice League deck now.